Man, um, some devastating news today on the dark community side, uh, at least in, in my opinion. Maybe devastating might be blowing it out of the water. No one, no one passed or anything, but um, macros are canceled. Uh, <laughs> and um, a lot of my hope for future projects in Dart were built on macros uh, and macros being a thing. Um, so here's, here's an update on Dart macros and data serialization. So this is from VJ, uh, Director of Engineering for Dart. Um, it's an interesting read. I I'm going to go through it all right now. I'll read it to you even, um, so you don't have to read it yourself. But we've investigated significant, sorry, we've invested significant time and resources to prototype macros over the past couple of years. So if you don't know what macros are, they're essentially a form of metaprogramming. Uh, it's an experimental uh, language. Uh, oh man, they've already updated this page. Was previously under development, uh, but the idea is static metaprogramming. So, um, in the Dart community, we have a tool called Build Runner, uh, and Build Runner is really, really popular, especially in the Flutter space. So it's it's a way of providing uh, code generation for Dart code. Um, rebuilds are incremental. It's inspired by Basil. Basil, I'm not sure how that's pronounced, but uh, familiar with it. Um, it's it's a fine tool. You can use it, um, but I have been pretty pretty uh, big on macros being a thing. Uh, we can find some projects of mine. Um, so if we go to like Pyre Studios here, uh, Steward, um, I think I have maybe I didn't have this actually added, but uh, one of the things here was. Um, Oh, shoot, I don't see the, uh, was it a discussion maybe? Yeah, I don't remember. Uh, I, I don't remember where it's at. But the point being that both Steward and Boson uh, are libraries that I've written in Dart, and the, the plan was to leverage macros. So um, Boson doesn't use macros or reflection or build runner currently, but there's plenty of opportunity for it to use those things. Steward does use reflection pretty heavily and reflections in, in a really weird spot. Um, so uh, another, another example that I have is dwell. Um, so this is a reflection based uh, data abstraction layer for dart. Um, there's information on it here. It uses reflection, will not work with Flutter. If you find this package useful, please voice your opinion on keeping reflection uh, around in Dart here. So yeah, this uses reflection. The goal is to not use reflection. The type safety you get with reflection is very poor compared to what you would expect from Dart. And um, the other option is, is Build Runner, right? So we could generate code with Build Runner. Build Runner is unwieldy. It is a pain to use in my opinion. Um, you have to install a separate tool, which is Build Runner, to actually run the code gen. There's this Build Runner pipeline working with Build Runner, kind of a pain. So uh, yeah, I, I found myself in a weird spot where I, I essentially met a fork in the road, which was, do I want this to be painful on users this way, or do I want you it to be painful on users that way? And this way being reflection, that way being Build Runner. So I, I have some little cheats in my code here to try to give people the best type safety I can with reflection, but it's it's not really up to my standards. Um, and for part of the reason I haven't worked on this that much is that uh, I've been waiting for macros and waiting and waiting. So anyways, they've been working on macros for a while. Unfortunately, each time we solved a major technical hurdle, we saw new ones pop up. At this point, we're not seeing macros converging anytime soon toward a feature we are comfortable shipping with the quality and developer time performance we want. Um, I respect this a lot, that we're sticking to the quality and developer experience that, that Dart is famous for. <clears throat> it is still a little frustrating that, um, that we don't have macros coming soon. After considering the opportunity cost and particularly the features we could be shipping to the community instead, we've made the difficult decision to stop our work on macros. So the background here, um, you can read this, I'll read it. We believe that Dart offers a unique combination of strengths. One, the ahead of time compilation and performance typical of static languages. 
So true. And two, fast development cycle. Um, stateful hot reload, typical of dynamic languages. Uh, one of the selling points of Dart and Flutter, in my opinion. As we've evolved Dart, we've been careful to evaluate language changes against both these rubrics. Powerful metaprogramming built on rich introspection has always been a challenge in this context. Runtime introspection, reflection, makes it difficult to perform tree-shaking optimizations that allow us to generate small binaries. That is very true. This is part of the reason that you can't use reflection with Flutter because it would make your project massive. Static introspection, such as macros, can take a couple forms. Most languages take a syntactic approach with limited static reflection on the syntax of programs. We did not believe this was sufficient to achieve our goals. Instead, we aimed to build a macro system which supported deep semantic introspection on the program at compile time. This sounds fantastic, but I also understand that, excuse me, that that is um, probably very difficult to do. Uh, semantic in introspection, unfortunately, turned out to introduce large compile time costs, which made it difficult to keep stateful hot reload hot. Yeah, that's, that's a trade-off that... Um, I'm not sure how I would I would prioritize both the arguments for and against, so I understand the difficulty there. We've concluded we're simply too far away from shipping macros with the developer time performance re we require. Our current implementation regresses both editing, static analysis, and code completion, and incremental compilation, the first step of a hot reload. We're not confident we can adequately solve these problems in a reasonable time frame. And just for context, so Build Runner kind of solves the same problem. Build Runner doesn't plug into Dart Run or you know, Flutter Run or anything like that. So if you want to rebuild things with Build Runner, um, you have to rerun the Build Runner command. So it's completely isolated from the Dart command, completely isolated from hot reloading, those type of things. Uh, that being said, you can rebuild the Build Runner or rerun the Build Runner command, and the generated files will hot reload in Dart, which works out really well. So moving forward. You know what, actually, hang on, before we get to this part, I would actually even be happy if they just took Build Runner and shoehorned it in as a form of macro. Like, don't require a separate tool. I don't want to have to have people install Build Runner separately and maintain their own Build Runner version and all these other things just to use code generation. I think that you know, if you're following along on the channel and you probably are confused as to why we're talking about Dart, um, you probably know that we've been doing a lot of Zig on this channel. Zig's build system is great for helping with um, plugging into things like code generation. And, and being able to do something like that with Dart would be nice. Like even just being able to wire in Build Runner in such a way that my library can ship with Build Runner and uh, I can plug it in without giving people a new CLI or anything like that, something that whenever they use Dart Run, it will take care of it. Um, I think that would be nice. So moving forward, we've decided to focus on other features we're more confident about shipping, sure. Uh, one area that we'll be investing in is better support for data in Dart. This is the most requested issue across the Dart and Flutter issue trackers. In fact, our primary motivation for macros was to pro provide better data handling, serialization, and deserialization. These are often done with Build Runner. So there is a JSON serializable uh, annotation that you can throw on things. It's a separate library as well. Um, but you can throw that JSON serializable annotation on and then use Build Runner to um, generate the to JSON and from JSON method for classes. Um, in fact, I would argue that most people's experience with Build Runner is probably limited to this or maybe a little bit beyond this. Uh, so this seems like a good problem to solve. We will still pursue better data, but we intend to do so with more bespoke language features. Okay. Another area we'll be investing in is improving build times and the overall code generation experience. We've already identified improvements for Build Runner. Hey, that's great. I actually want to click into that. We'll come back to it in a second. Uh, we also plan to ship augmentations, a feature we prototyped as part of macros. Oh, I did not care for augmentations. Uh, we believe this language feature stands on its own and will improve existing code generation. That's probably true. My fear is that it just unnecessarily complicates the language. We still aim to ship this feature independently. Okay, let's talk about augmentations first. So augmentations allow spreading your implementation across multiple locations. So you can take a class. Uh, it's like partial classes in um, C Sharp. So you can take a class and you can break it apart across multiple files. Um, yeah, that's it. They can add new top-level declarations, inject new members into classes, and wrap functions and variables in additional code. 
Start library is the, the unit of code reuse. When an API is too large to fit into a single file, you can split it into multiple libraries and then have one main library export all the others. That's what I've done with all of my projects. This works well when the functionality in each file is made of separate top-level declarations. I don't think this is too much of an ask. Um, I understand that with code generation, it becomes tricky. And that JSON serializable type approach that I mentioned, uh, what that does is it creates new files that implement from JSON and to JSON. And then you have to go into your class and like wire up a from JSON and a to JSON that points to the generated methods. I get it. It's a small pain point, but I, it, it's a pain point, but it's small. I, and I don't think that the trade-off that you're making here is probably worth it. Uh, yeah. So sometimes a single class declaration is too large to fit comfortably in a file. Sure. Dart libraries and even part files are no help there. Okay. Um, because of this, users have asked for something, hey, partial classes. Uh, they've asked for something like partial classes. C Sharp also supports splitting the declaration and implementation methods into files. Um, information about macros here. Uh, macros would essentially reduce the need for this. Um, I was curious. I'm pretty sure they have some code examples. Yeah, so you can see here, like, augmenting class, some class. Um, augmenting this uh, function. Yeah, I feel like it's just adding a level of unnecessary depth, and with depth comes complexity that will make the language even more difficult. You don't have to use this feature if they add it, and my recommendation, probably what I will do, I should say, is probably not use it very much, if at all. Um, but it's just another thing that you have to worry about and another thing that is a part of the language spec and another thing that the language has to support going forward. Okay, uh, yeah, build runner. Um, faster builds for build runner. I haven't seen this yet, so uh, it's complicated. Okay. Uh, adding benchmarks. Um, since most of the build runner CPU time is spent reading code, unit files, and parsing them, I propose a more dynamic loading approach. Okay, that's that's it. That's all we have so far. Oh, 17 hours ago. Yeah, this is fresh. Okay, so this is probably the issue that came out of them canning macros is, hey, we're going <laughs> to... I don't know if you've identified improvements outside of the fact that like it can be improved. Um, actually, I guess this is an improvement, so they've defined an improvement. Okay. Uh, we understand this will be disappointing news to many of you. Yeah, I am uh, I have to figure out what I want to do with these projects now because uh, reflection has been neglected for a really long time, and um, I don't want to use Build Runner, so I, I'm not sure. We remain interested in exploring general metaprogramming in the long term as it has a number of potential use cases beyond data. Nevertheless, we also want to be clear with our community that we will not be shipping macros in the foreseeable future. We'd like to thank everyone who tried macros, provided feedback, and contributed directly to PRs. That input and energy will feed into the work we do next. We're excited about the improvements we can offer this year. So I'm curious. Uh, ba -ba -ba -ba. <laughs> uh, so this is the discontinuing support for dark mirrors. This is the reflection library. Um, I have been on here a couple times. Uh, automatically generating code is what macros are intended to answer. Yeah, let's, um, you know what? I'm, I'm not going to type up my comment here on recording, uh, but I will type up a comment and ask about the future for reflection because I'm, I'm really curious. Uh, are we going to actually see more with reflection now that macros are canned? Probably not, but um, I hope so. It'd be nice if we shirt up the mirrors library and made it nicer. Uh, yeah, I think that's it. I'm <laughs> uh, a little, uh, quite a bit disappointed, but I, I still respect what they're doing and that they said, hey, this isn't working well enough that we're comfortable shipping it. And so they're not going to ship it, which which is probably the right move for the language over the long haul. Um but yeah, I had I had a lot writing on macros for Dart. So yeah, we'll see. Um, there's not a better option for mobile, in my opinion, than Flutter. Um, so I'll still be doing Dart things on the Flutter side, but anything else, I, I don't really know too much more about um, if I'll be doing that or not. So yeah, 